Firefighters across the country are used to working long and varied schedules. But in North Kingstown, a new 24-hour shift has evolved into a bitter battle between the firefighters and the town, which implemented the longer shift over the union's objections in an effort to save money. The only way we're going to save money is through personnel costs. Um, the days of doing more with less are long gone. You're doing less with less. Town manager Mike Embry readily admits that the longer shift, which also increases the average work week to 56 hours, is a test case for Rhode Island, but that it has been successful in other parts of the country. Embry estimates the new firefighter scheduling will save taxpayers more than a million dollars a year on an $8 million annual budget. If we're saving money, we don't have to make the drastic cuts that you're seeing around the country. I mean, if you look at places in Michigan, California, uh, Missouri, public safety and pension issues are the major issues, personnel issues, where the cost cutting is coming. It's so unsafe to do what we're doing now. Ray Furtado, president of the North Kingstown Firefighters Association, disputes the savings and says the town implemented the new schedule even though it couldn't get it through arbitration then lost in Superior Court. Despite that, the town maintains as part of its management rights, it can adopt the longer shifts and work week. The union says that needs to be negotiated and took the town to court. We were in the process of trying to negotiate a contract. Uh, we came to the table with, with concessions and a number of different packages to try to save the taxpayers money, keep us safe, and overall benefit the community. And uh, it just, a lot of our office just fell on deaf ears and they were insistent on, on implementing this, this 56 hour work week structure. Here's how it works. Firefighters work a 24 hour shift, then have 48 hours off which means the first two weeks they work 48 hours a week. But the third week of the month, it increases to 72 hours in one week, for an average of 56 hours a week over the course of the month. North Kingstown is the only department in Rhode Island to have a 56-hour standard work week schedule on top of the 24-hour shift. The shift has allowed the town to reduce the number of platoons from four to three, meaning overall it needs fewer firefighters to meet minimum manning requirements. The town initially wanted to implement the new system with no pay increase. It doesn't make a lot of sense to move from a 42 to a 56 hour work week and keep people's hourly rate the same because you're, you're costing yourself a lot of money. This was uh, going against all the systems that were in place like collective bargaining and arbitration and it was wrong. Town Councilman Chuck Brennan, a retired North Kingstown police captain, opposed the new shift, but was on the losing end of a three to two vote by the council to approve it, with the provision that firefighters would get a 10% pay increase to cover the 33% increase in hours. The system might not be so controversial if the fire department hadn't decreased in manpower by nearly 30% over the past five years from a high of 80 firefighters in 2007 to 56 currently. Of those, four are not available to work because of injuries, which means if there's a sickness or vacation and someone doesn't volunteer for overtime, others are mandated to stay and work an extra 24 hours or longer. Everybody's being forced to, to essentially play the Russian roulette game and wonder if I go into work on Thursday morning, when am I coming home again? It might not be until Saturday night. It might be Monday morning. I mean, you never know. The two sides disagree on whether overtime costs will eat up projected savings. And the town won't know for sure until the end of the budget year. Last week when we spoke, I just pulled up the daily run sheet for that day. We had one firefighter who was on 100 hours of straight duty. His last shift, at the end of that, the tail end of that 100 hour shift, he was the 911 operator. Of 17 people on duty, nine of them had been there for more than 24 hours. Five of those nine had been ordered to stay because there wasn't anybody else to replace them. Furtado added that overtime is driven by staffing and not shifts. It's the size of your workforce that determines what you spend on overtime. A work schedule doesn't matter because you need X amount of people on X amount of trucks, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Really what it does, first of all, physically it wears you down. People weren't meant to work that many hours. And the other thing is, um, Mentally, it's time away from your family, 
missing missing things that are going on with your family, maybe uh, ruining plans that you had. You, you know, you work your regular shift and you say, okay, well, I, we can go to that cookout. I'm picking my son up or whatever, and then all of a sudden, I'm not coming home. It bothers me a lot. And that's the complaint 14-year-old Miranda Brooks has. Her father has been a North Kingstown firefighter for more than 20 years. Because her parents are divorced, Miranda says the new schedule has made it even harder for her to spend time with him. We just kind of lost our closeness. I can only imagine like what all the other kids are feeling, like because they're used to seeing their dad every single day. There's been a lot of uh, brouhaha that, well, this is not safe. Well, you get to sleep. You have the ability to sleep on a 24-hour shift. Embry says in 2011, the department responded to just under 4,800 calls. If you do the math, he says, it works out to an average of just over three calls per station per day. When you go through the call data over the years, I think, you know, it lends itself to people being able to sleep and getting rested, whether you're on a 24-hour or you're on uh, a 14 or a 10. But there's no guarantee of that. You could have a busy night. You might have a busy night. There are some days where you might have 20. There are days when there's four for the town in the 24-hour period. It is a change for, um, for f family life. There are a couple of people who've talked about that and, yes, understand that, but some of those very same people didn't have a problem working a regular 10, a 14 on overtime, stay there for the regu second regular 10, and then pick up another 14 on overtime before they went home. The town has four stations, including a new one in rural Slocum that is staffed by two firefighters. So is station two in Saunderstown. Each of the stations has beds to sleep in and the firefighters have provided many of the amenities. He says there's ample opportunity for your membership to be to get some sleep mm -hmm. and that it's not a safety danger even when somebody's mandated to go the, the extra, the, the 48 hour. Now you could have a busy time here and there, but he said overall that there is adequate sleep for your guys and gals. What, how do you react? Uh, truthfully, it's, it's a, the nature of this business is that you don't get a guaranteed rest period. I mean, so many other industries have regulations on how many consecutive hours you can work. Whether it, if you're a medical resident, if you're a truck driver, if you have, if you're a nurse, there are there are different professions. So many of them have regulations saying you can't work any further than this because it's unhealthy, it's unsafe, whatever it is. For the fire service, that doesn't exist. The few places that work 24-hour shifts in this state have provisions in place so somebody doesn't work over an excess amount of time. There's none of that in North Kingstown. In fact, there is no maximum number of hours a firefighter can work. Then there's the issue of many firefighters holding second jobs. Nobody's begrudging a firefighter a second job, making a lot of money doing what they can for their family. Their primary job is as a firefighter, though. Is that so the I gorilla think, in the room that nobody's talking oh, about, that's, that it could be the second job? That is the big gorilla in the room. and. I give him credit for, for saying it. He didn't say it to me. It's to a third party who is very reliable. said, look, I make more money at my second job. I'm here because of the pension and the benefits. And oh, this is impacting fine. my hours to get that job done? Yeah, it may be, maybe not. Has this become personal? <sighs> it's not a personal issue between, uh, for me, so to speak. What, what, what I take personally is just... We, we are really, they're, they're, they're public safety professionals, and we're telling them you, you have a fundamentally unsafe, unsafe system right now. You Mr. Ember says this is a business decision. If this is a business decision, uh, well, I don't know where the savings are. I mean, if, if this is a business decision, how do you operate a business and place your employees at, at virtually a risk daily that they don't need to be placed at? If this is a business decision, how do you not give your, your employees the resources or, the, or the, the staffing, the manpower, to go ahead and make sure that that business is operated effectively? I mean. He may have said it's a business decision. I don't know if he said it was a good one because from where we sit, it certainly is not. What about the argument we need to streamline and we need to do a little bit better job? What other ways are there to do it? I, th I think you're right. There are um, issues facing North Kingston like all communities, but the firefighters I know have come to the table with a lot of concessions. And I don't think the town's taking a good, serious, honest look at their concessions because I think the town... Um, the, the people who are in favor of this, I think they would rather get this system in place. I think they want to be the first ones to say we have a three platoon, 24-hour system, and we won.
So for now, the new shifts remain, but the two sides will be back in court later this month. And both sides insist they're open to negotiations, but they haven't sat down together since February. In North Kingstown, Jim Hummel for the Hummel Report.